With this video, I'd like to demonstrate some of the elements of refractive cataract surgery. I use a standard 2.2 millimeter temporal clear corneal incision, and I mark the, cor mark the cornea with a 5.75 millimeter capsulorexis marker made by Mastel Precision. The capsulotomy then is fashioned and follows the faint mark that I leave on the corneal epithelium to ensure that there is a good overlap of anterior capsule for the intended lens. Hydrodissection is very important, especially in these softer lenses. You can see the fluid wave is completed around the fornix of the bag with the initial wave and decompression and then a second wave is propagated followed by multiple hydrodelineation movements. These lenses come apart fairly easily with minimal chopping maneuvers and then INA is carried out in a routine fashion, but with care to remove all elements of solid cortex material. In this case, I'm just going to polish the posterior capsule circumferentially at the area just behind the anterior capsulotomy. And then with a moderate amount of viscoelastic, I will then polish the LECs and cortical material that remains from the anterior uh, capsular membrane, initially using a Singer sweep from Epsilon, followed by a wrench curette from Goiter. This allows me, using these two instruments, to reach 360 degrees of the capsular membrane through standard incisions. You can visualize the liberated material here. Switching to the stereocoaxial illumination on the uh, Lumera microscope, I can visualize the posterior capsule in a more delicate manner and incising it with a 30 gauge needle I then place OVD into burger space and then uh, placing additional OVD both anterior and posterior to the posterior capsule I can then use my standard utrata forceps to fashion a posterior capsulotomy. You can visualize here the material that's being liberated along with the posterior capsule. I have in the past used extensive efforts of polishing this material and to my frustration, there often will remain some material uh, on the posterior capsule or potentially a rupture of the posterior capsule with extensive polishing can occur. And so for specific patients, I have gone to the posterior continuous curvilinear capsulorexis. Additional OVD is placed in the nasal fornix of the bag. And I then load the single piece lens into the D cartridge myself, allowing me to visualize the lens and inspect it. This cartridge and injector system um, easily places this lens within the remaining capsular membrane. The haptics are extended, and then with OVD removal, it's important not to go behind the lens, but simply to go to all four quadrants 
and remove material from the fornix of the bag, followed by evacuation of the viscose from the endothelium. Now I like to flush the angle to ensure that no additional OVD remains in the eye. And a final positioning based on the uh, overlapping of the two uh, Purkinje images from the microscope ensures for a very centered lens. And I feel this aids in the post-operative result for these patients. This patient ended up 2015 distance uncorrected and J1 plus uncorrected.